President Joe Biden has made a pretty awful decision. He has nominated a man who has absolutely no interest in protecting and bolstering the social security system. In fact, he's a man who has a long track record in wanting to privatize social security. His name is Andrew Biggs. And he has been nominated for a very, very important role. He would essentially serve in a board that the president advises with and takes advice from on what to do with social security. So on May 13th, Biden chose to nominate Biggs, a fellow at the right wing American Enterprise Institute, it's a think tank, for a Republican seat on the bipartisan Social Security Advisory Board, which was created in 1994 to consult the President and Congress about the Social Security system. So I'm not really interested in hearing from a right winger who served or worked for the Heritage Foundation on the topic of Social Security. Pretty sure I can figure out what his advice would be. But for anyone who might be in the dark about the American Enterprise Institute, Let's give you a little, little brief on who Biggs is. So the lever reports that in 2001, Biggs was a staff analyst on George W. Bush's Commission on Social Security that advocated privatizing the government program by shifting the program's trust fund investments from US Treasury bills to high fee, high risk personal accounts that seniors could use to invest Social Security assets in the stock and bond markets. Like employees do with their 401ks. I don't know about you guys, but 401ks relative to what pensions were like suck. There's a lot more risk involved. There's a lot more onus on the worker. The employer, you know, gets a massive break from not having to pay into a pension. It's it has not ended up well for retirees and we do have a retirement crisis. Baby boomers, even though they enjoyed economic prosperity and kind of screwed over our generation, a lot of them don't have enough money to retire on. That is an issue. And this guy's solution was, let's introduce more risk, let's privatize it. And Biden looked at that guy and thought, nailed it. I'm gonna put you on my advisory board. What are you doing, Biden? In 2013, Biggs justified the idea of raising the retirement age for social security benefits by saying that Americans biggest, um, Americans biggest on the job risk, you know, carpal tunnel syndrome from your mouse or something like that. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of Americans that are suffering from other ailments related to the work that they do. Um, not just physical, by the way, mental health issues as well. But let me continue. Reporters over at The Lever also reached out to him to get some clarity on where he stands on the issue of Social Security. Remember, Social Security was put in place to prevent elderly people from like insane poverty and homelessness. And it's not a popular position to want to privatize Social Security. Social Security and Medicare are super, super popular. So when The Lever reached out to him to get some clarity on where he stands, he took a page out of Trump's book and was like, deny, deny, deny. No, me, what, me? I had a change of heart, I swear. Even though I gave a speech not too long ago talking about how we need to privatize this. He even gave a talk recently I was watching on YouTube where he wanted to make it a lot more difficult for people to get disability benefits. And argued that a lot of people receiving disability benefits are essentially liars and they can go back to work. That's, that's who this guy is, that's who Andrew Biggs is. He has dismissed the retirement crisis as a non-issue. And as recently as 2020 blamed problems with the social security system on older Americans game of chicken. And two decades ago, Biggs worked on a Bush administration commission that pushed to privatize social security. And when the reporters over at the lever reached out to him, he denied it. Instead, he said he now believes that the nation's social security like programs should be more focused on guaranteeing against poverty and old age, while middle and high income individuals take on greater responsibility for, let's just stop. When he says middle and high income earners, he's just he's just talking about working Americans, okay? He's, he's being very careful with his wording here, but 
anyone who has to work for their living, you know, people who aren't just investors who get to sit around and collect money, you know, either from their investment or from being a landlord. Like that's not who he's talking about here. He's specifically talking about working people, okay? Many of whom do not have anything near what's necessary to be able to retire. They are not on track to, to retire comfortably. But let me continue. Take on greater responsibility for saving for retirement on their own, such as by the government establishing universal retirement savings accounts for every worker. Yeah, the social security model has worked out pretty well. Um, and if anyone's concerned about whether or not we have enough resources to keep it going, you could just lift the social security tax cap, which this year is about $137,000. So people earning over $137,000, they no longer get taxed for social security for income above that. Just lift it, just lift it. It's super regressive to have a cap that only benefits high earners in the country. But of course, he's not advocating for that. The guys from the American Enterprise Institute. Finally, Biden didn't even have to pick this guy. So that advisory board is traditionally bipartisan, right? But there's no law forcing the President of the United States to make it bipartisan. In fact, Donald Trump refused to nominate a single Democrat, a single liberal to that advisory board, not one. But Biden, like a good boy, you know, make sure you do right by your Wall Street donors who you told, you know, nothing will fundamentally change under my watch. Good boy, gotta pick Andrew Biggs, the guy who is on the record in endless talks that you can watch yourself on YouTube advocating for the privatization of one of the most popular social spending programs in this country. Social Security. And then Biden turns around and asks himself, along with the Democratic Party overall, why is my approval rating so low? What's going on? I don't get it. Well, you're telling the American people you don't care about them by rubbing shoulders with clowns like this chump. There are consequences for your actions, and he deserves the low approval ratings that he's suffering from as we speak.